what's up? It's Tom doing my first video blog or vlog as they call it. I'm driving around in my truck because honestly I don't have my dirt bike and I want my dirt bike but I don't have it. So I'm driving around in my truck. It's a uh, 2013 F-150 STX with the 5 liter V8 and extended cab not crew cab. And I love it. So, like, I've done, just done little things here and there to it, basically blacked it all out. Uh, I got a two and a half inch leveling kit in the front, an out of leaf uh, suspension kit in the back. Uh, I have my wheels powder coated black, um, satin black to be specific. I have a Canon and air intake and then a Flowmaster series, uh, 40 series exhaust with a 3.5 inch piping to a 4 inch tip. And it sounds pretty mean. Uh, I don't know if you guys can hear it on the camera, but it's pretty mean. It drones pretty bad on the highway. Not really bad, but pretty bad. And it's just like it's an awesome combination so far i've blacked out a lot of things like I've changed like the ford emblems and the f-150 stuff on the side is all kind of custom like red and black like kind of vibe going on which is really good my next step would be like get bigger wheels and tires because now i can kind of fit like i think i can fit like 34s 35s um so i'm looking to probably do that and everyone always thinks the raptors have 35 inch tires they have 34.4 inch tires so technically they have 34 and a half inch tires. And I know that because I was reading an article on it, and as you probably know, my father drives a Raptor. So, and I love that truck, it's it's amazing. It's honestly, it's awesome. We're big Ford people. I mean, we've experimented with other, like other truck companies, and we've just never really liked them, except for Dodge. No one likes Dodge. At least anyone I, like, I know likes Dodge. They're honestly probably one of the worst trucks out there. They made a huge comeback in the recent years. They have actually they're doing like substantially better than they've ever done, and their trucks now are actually really decent. But they're about to lose Cummins, so that's a, probably a pretty big upset for Dodge. I think by 2018 they're not gonna have Cummins anymore. Which is not too great for them. But I mean it's Sour Patch Kids, because they're the best. Candy. Now I'm driving around town. Well, I think I'm still in Burlington, Burlington, Vermont, for those creepers who want to know. But, yeah, I go to school in Burlington, Vermont, if anyone didn't know, if it wasn't made aware. That's why our video production is a lot slower than normal, because the past two years, Zach and I have been in college, and that makes a pretty big... Uh, impact in the in our video making process because I have to drive five hours. She has to drive three hours to go home. It's a lot of wear and tear on us to drive back and forth and try to do different types of uh, schooling, such as Zach is mechanical engineering. Uh, I started out with mechanical engineering. It's an awesome degree. It's really hard. I'm not gonna lie. It's substantially hard. And so I decided to make the switch into business. And I'd like to get like a business degree and then finish off my engineering degree in like a year or two or in a couple of years. We'll see where that leads, but that's my plan. So that's why we can't dirt bike as much as we want. Um, which is kind of like the main main thing that why we don't put videos out as often. I was getting gummy on my teeth and you just noticed. And so like, I don't know, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, I wish you posted more videos. Like we try, we can't. All those videos that you saw were from summer. We literally wrote, and there were more that Zach didn't, Zach didn't upload or didn't edit. So there are more videos, but he doesn't have the time to edit them. And I'm not sufficient at editing. That's why I'm working on this. You know what I mean? So I can learn how to edit and start my own thing because in the you know future, Zach and I may not be together. We like riding dirt bikes. It's not gonna last forever. So I have to somehow figure out what I'm gonna do. Hopefully, I get a follower base. You know, you guys hopefully enjoy my videos, enjoy what I do. Um, and I'm planning on definitely increasing production on my own channel here in, in the more recent recent times. And, and I think it's going to be pretty good uh, with what I'm coming out with. I'm going to try to do a lot of vlogs. Uh, if you guys like them, if you don't like them and find them boring, I won't do them. Uh, I'll just try to do dirt biking stuff. Even dirt biking vlogs, four-wheeler vlogs. At, literally anything you want vlogged, I will vlog. Probably. So, I didn't know there was a Texas Roadhouse here. I really didn't know that. I've never been out this far, honestly. Let's see, we're gonna keep going straight. Okay, okay, make the turn, you Dodge driver. See, Dodge drivers, terrible, terrible people. I'm just kidding, they're not that bad, but 
a lot of people are wondering, like, what's going on with your dirt bike? Why is it, you know, overheating? Why is it junk? It's not junk. It's not. People post in the comments and say, KTM is so junk. Why do you guys all ride KTM? Like, you should ride all the other bike manufacturers. And, you know, honestly, the fact of the matter is, KTM is the best woods ready machine on the market, other than Gas Gas or now Husqvarna. There's just no denying the fact that KTM is the best. And they just, they have really high grade components. Their bikes are made really well. Um, and a lot of people are like, oh, they break down on time. You have to cost so much. To f yeah, like it costs so much to fix them. It costs a lot to fix any bike. The only bike it doesn't cost a lot to fix is a two stroke of any kind. So that's my thought on that, at least. So everyone's like, oh, why is your bike junk? Like, why do you have KTMs? Why does it break down? Blah, blah, blah. I've never had a KTM bike mistreat me on its own. It's always been aided by some kind of human interaction with the bike that caused it to malfunction. So I'll take you back to my second bike, my 2010 KTM 250 XCFW or WF or whatever it was. And that bike was awesome. Although I didn't know that with high performance motors like that, you need to change the oil every three to five hours. If you don't know that, you do. Um, it, it sucks a lot of oil, but it saves your engine a lot. Um, so I didn't know this. I'm used to this like old thinking of like early, like 2000 era four wheelers and like dirt bikes, like the DRZs and stuff that you don't change oil as often because they're just bulletproof motors. They're bulletproof bikes. And I wasn't used to that. So I didn't change oil very often. And Zach saw like it was burning, like burning blue smoke, which is oil. And Zach was like, oh dude, you gotta get that checked out. Like, oh, 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 that's so bad. Like blah, 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 blah. It was going off and how terrible that is and stuff. Honestly, he probably didn't know much about it at the time. Neither did I. He just knew it was bad. Zach likes to be a little hysterical sometimes. And that's why the videos are so awesome. And so I got it brought to a dealer. They fixed it. I think they did a top end. I'm pretty certain they did a top end. Uh, and he told us, like, yeah, you have to change the oil every three hours. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that's absurd. So, and then after that, the bike never really ran right. It always, like, I think it was a lot of valving problems or car problems. And just never, it would always bog it, if you guys remember. It would bog, and it just got, like, really annoying. And the bike was just, so I ended up selling and getting a two-stroke. But that, it was human interference that caused the bike to malfunction. If I had proper maintenance of the bike, it would be working to this day. I bet it still is working to this day. Someone probably did what they needed to do to fix it, and it's fine. And so, like, I don't know. I'm going to turn around and step out. I think. Oh, God. that's They slowed down so fast. Um, so my two-stroke obviously went in the river, but never had a problem. The bike still ran stronger than an animal. But it went in the river. Other than that, I mean, it ran great. I mean, that was stupid. Riding that day was really stupid. Don't ever do what we do on the show because it's probably stupid. And we do it for your entertainment so you can watch it and so you don't have to do it. Um, also, so my 350, now that I have that, the bike is the best dirt bike I have ever owned. Granted, I've only owned four. And, like, progressing, you know, getting older, realizing, like, what I like more. And granted, this bike's a lot more of a bike than any other bike I previously have. A lot more aftermarket components in it. Recluse, FMF exhaust, factory connection suspension like all kinds of stuff and it's a wonderful bike now everyone's like oh the heating problem why is your bike why is it junk that was my fault 100 percent my fault nothing to do with the bike so the overflow hose that runs from the top of the radiator down along the frame and then that's where overflow steam and possibly some liquid comes out most of them about well, it's about 100 percent steam actually and the biggest thing with that was I moved it onto the other side of my engine on the other side of my frame I kind of swapped it over a little bit because I put a reservoir bottle in or er, no I moved it over for something else I don't remember why but I moved it and that caused it to heat up from the header pipe I didn't realize it was that close I didn't think it'd be a problem and it melted shut now what happens when you have pressure that can't be released it goes somewhere 
So I was losing coolant at a higher rate because my motor wasn't cooling down as all, as quickly as it should. That's why I lose coolant. That's why it boils over more. And then that's also why uh, I had those problems. Oh, I stopped. Um, so basically, I think what happened, and this is my diagnosis, is the fact that the, the pressure blew the, didn't blow the head gasket, but made its way through the head gasket and then was burning off in the, oil, in the, in the engine because you can see it in the engine. You can see... Uh, sometimes uh, white smoke being burned is radiator uh, fluid. And so like that ended up being a problem. As you can see, the bike boiled over and it, it stayed really hot. So that was all human error. My fault. I blame that. And any, anything that has to be done to fix it is obviously my fault. And the bike obviously would run strong, like just as good as the day I first bought it. Not bought Well, I bought it from the guy who owned it. And he took oh, awesome care of the bike. Really, I'm actually kind of good friends with him now. He just bought a 2016 factory edition or 2015.5, the brand new one that Dungey now rides on Supercross. Um, and so my bike right now isn't, I haven't run it since the last race. And you lost my footage in the last race. So what happened was I was going up the hill, the radiator hose, the overflow hose that goes from my radiators to my reservoir bottle caught a I put a zip tie an extra zip tie on it before the race which was stupid because it made it rub against this bolt and I didn't realize it before the race so by the end of the race it had worn it was hot and malleable and cut a hole into the radiator hose which blew it and then steam blew everywhere so and then I went to fill it up with my my, my water bladder I didn't have much water in there and it didn't fill up very much so I didn't want to keep riding the, riding the bike uh, because of that and also something happened with my clutch my clutch lever is not holding hydraulic fluid that I'm guessing is a simple fix I haven't had I haven't been home so I haven't been able to fix it um, but I'm hoping that's a simple fix so with the with my 350 I plan to walk my brain to a guy and have him look through the motor because I four strokes are complicated I'm not gonna lie they're complicated I'm gonna have him look through the motor make sure everything's all okay I have a new head gasket that I'm going to get installed on it. And then my biggest thing is I'm going with... So what comes stock on a bike is like a 1.2 uh, bar, which is a measurement of pressure uh, cap. And I'm going to buy a 2.0 bar cap to go to run some Evans coolant. I also have a poison pump as well. Um, that I, that's already on the bike. With that, the poison pump, I, I'm buying a fan to put on it uh, to cool the radiator. So I get the cap, the radiator, I'm doing new hoses for the overflow system um, since one got cut. So I'm doing all of that and I think that is going to solve the cooling issue that I had. Uh, and I'm pretty positive that that's going to help. So I know you guys are kind of wondering what's wrong with your bike. That's what's wrong with it. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be all fixed up shortly. It's all going to be okay. She'll be back. Got some new graphics this year, hopefully running the number 907 through Winoa. I haven't seen if it's been posted or not. I can't wait. I'm gonna go look when I get back actually to my dorm and go see if it's been posted. Oh, I'm in Richmond. This is that's the interstate. Wow, I never knew this came down this way. I think. Yes, it is. Wow, I came really far south very quickly. Interesting. So that is like the biggest thing with the bike is just getting fixed and that's going to happen here within the month or so and hopefully get riding. Uh, I still have that 2011 uh, KX that I am actually looking to sell or trade for a KTM 150 model year 2012 or newer if you know anyone. So, oh look at all the new Caterpillars. Oh my gosh, those look awesome. So, that's what I'm looking forward to. Hopefully getting a 150 soon ish i don't know i'd like to get another two i'd like to get another two stroke fun two stroke i don't want to do 125 for some reason i just don't want to so i'm between the 150 and the 200 we'll see where that goes um so so my 350 hopefully running the numbers 907 with some cool graphics from decal works and some tom herc racing graphics 
Um, maybe we'll just blast a Zack Attack one in there. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Because, uh, you know, I still like Zack Attack one. And I still enjoy doing it, but I want to do my own thing. I want to start my own thing. Hope you guys enjoy what I'm going to start doing. And if you want me to talk about certain things, post it in the comments. I'll try to get to it. I'll try to vlog once a week. I got a new frame for my GoPro. So let's see how that works and with sound quality and such. And if it's not good enough, I'll get a mic and we'll keep going on this. And uh, I'm also probably going to get another camera to vlog with. So we'll see what happens. If you guys want to hear how awesome this truck is. enjoy the video and hope you got a cool day going on and the rest of your day it's about to rain here that's that kind of stinks but the snow's melting i'm a big skier love skiing i'm ready for it to go away it's time i'm on a dirt bike i've been itching to do it for the past month or so i need to make videos i need to ride dirt bikes let's go summer all right see you guys later